Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Spoonie's Celtic Show. I'm recording a little later than normal. It's well past exactly 4.46 p.m. Today, I got an interesting one for you. I got a fun one. So there's been a lot of talk about Jason Tatum and where he fits in in the league other than being top five. We all know he's top five, at least in our hearts. But where does he truly sit? amongst his peers. And I'm not just talking about quote unquote top 10 players, right? It's really difficult to parse out how much better is Tatum than some jump shooting center, you know, than Porzingis. Obviously he's a lot better, right? But they just play completely different roles. How much better is Tatum than Chris Paul, right? It's hard to make that determination just because they're doing such different things. So here's what I've done. I'm going to compare Tatum this whole episode to three comparable players. And what I'm looking at is big wings first. You got to be big, big like Clay. You got to shoot like Steph. Not necessarily, but you've got to have a perimeter game, right? That's paramount to what Jason Tatum does. He can shoot, he's big, and maybe most importantly, he handles the ball a lot. So those are kind of the three attributes I'm looking at when I'm looking at comparable players. So here are the three guys I decided on. I wanted to grab a guy I know, or at least before looking at the stats, my perception is that he's much better than Jason Tatum, or at least better. I don't know. Is anybody much better than Tatum? We'll find out. Then I wanted to find a guy who I think is pretty close or who I would say is equal value, equal performance on the court. And then I wanted to grab a guy I thought, Tatum's definitely better than. And just look at what the stats tell me. Is that true? Is my eye test right? And I think that can help us kind of contextualize exactly exactly where Tatum ranks amongst his actual peers that play a similar role. So for the player I think is clearly better than Tatum, we're going to be looking at Kevin Durant. I think the numbers are going to back that up as well. So Durant's involved. For the guy close to him, we're going with Paul George. George has been hurt a lot of this year. He's not played a ton of games, but he's got 26 games. I think that's enough of a sample size. And you'll actually see uh, exactly what I'm getting at when I walk through these numbers is it's really going to be really difficult to parse who's better between the two because they just have such different strengths and weaknesses despite both being 6'8", 3'4", who handle a ton of the ball and run a lot of offense. And the guy that, I'm sorry, man, that I think Tatum is clearly better than is Brandon Ingram. And we'll see how Ingram stacks up against these three perennial all-stars. I'm sorry in advance, Brandon. Okay, so how I'm going to evaluate these guys. I'm going to look at, first, defense, right? They all have to play defense. They play similar, similar roles on defense. They all have to be switchable. Durant even plays some five. Not that much, but every now and again, but he's kind of unique in that. Usually they're switchable, big wing, maybe matched up on the second best wing player on the other team. And, you know, they're expected to switch on to bigs. They're expected to switch on to ball handlers. They can all be very impactful given their size. So defense first. Then we're going to talk about playmaking. Again, all these guys are at least secondary creators for their team. It's an important part of what they do what sets them apart from like a Robert Covington type, who's also 6'8 wing, but mainly just shoots open threes. Then most importantly, I'm going to really get into the details about bucket getting, about scoring, because that's what all these dudes do, right? They're all right around 25 points per game scorers. How they get their buckets, what ways, and how efficient they are at doing that is very important in evaluating which of these four guys is better. And then last, I'm going to look at some sort of general impact metrics that try to tell the story on one number, who of these guys is the best player, at least this season. And, you know, I will say up front, Paul George kind of gets a bad rap on some of these because a lot of them are cumulative, right? So the fact that he's just played less games kind of hurts him. But, you know, I'll make note, George is a great player. No one's denying that. So Hey, we got to do our best. There's only so many guys who are as as good as Jason Tatum, right? All right, so let's jump into it. And I will say a lot of charts, 
the Spoonie Celtic show, more like the Spoonie chart show. But here we are. It's the easiest way to present this information. And just like last episode, I'm going to walk through these nice and slow. So if you're listening at home or in your car or in the shower for some reason, uh, you hopefully will be able to follow along. So, okay. Chart number one, like I said, we're going defense first. Defensive rating is the first stat we're going to look at, and that's basically how many points does your team give up when you are on the court per 100 possessions, right? This is NBA.com's version, not whatever that broke-ass basketball reference estimated blah, blah, blah version is. This is the actual stat, NBA.com. You're going to see here Tatum 102.5. That's elite. That's crazy good, like insanely good. Durant. 108.5. 108.5. Paul George, 104.5. Also amazing. And then my guy, Brandon Ingram, 110.4. So early returns. Tatum looks like the best defender by a pretty significant margin. I think contextually, Tatum's also on the best defensive team in the NBA. Paul George, though, The Clippers are a great defensive team as well. That's how they're winning games. They have a top five defense. And, I mean, George is a great defender in his own right. I think Tatum's actually been underrated on defense, but we'll get into that a little bit. But early, out of the gate, Tatum's got the lead on the pack. Brandon Ingram tailing way behind even Kevin Durant. And Durant's is actually pretty bad, 108.5. Is actually surprising to me because at the beginning of the season, the Nets were playing pretty damn good defense. They were top 10 defense for a while until really I thought Durant got hurt, but that defensive rating tells me maybe they were slipping before he did. Um, Okay, so we're going to move on to defensive box plus minus, which is kind of an all-in-one stat trying to show what's your defensive impact based on your box score stats. It's very imperfect. Not a big fan. I'm not a fan of this and the next metric I'm going to talk about, which is defensive win shares. But nonetheless, here we are. Defensive box plus minus. Tatum's 0.5. 0.5. Durant, 0.7. Paul George, 1.7. Ingram, sorry, dog, minus 1.0. So Paul George, clear lead there, 1.7. Durant's coming in second with the 0.7. Tatum, 0.5, and, and Ingram way behind. Ingram, the, the theme here is Ingram is not an impressive defensive player. I don't think his team helps him out, but, you know, watching him, I don't watch a ton of Pelicans games, but when I do, he is not a standout defensively, especially considering his tools. So um, that makes sense. Paul George, uh, pretty good blocks and steals guy. He's going to really weigh out good on defensive box plus minus. All right, defensive win shares. This tries to estimate. That's the next stat we're looking at. Estimate how many wins you've added on the defensive end throughout the course of the season. So like some of these impact metrics I'll get to eventually, this is a stat that's cumulative. So the more you play, the higher it's going to be, unless you're really bad on defense, Brandon Ingram. Uh, So Tatum way, way, way in the lead on this stat at 3.6. Kevin Durant, 1.2. Not very good, frankly. Paul George, 1.5. Pretty good for only playing 20, like pretty damn good for only playing 26 games. And Brandon Ingram, who has played a lot this year, 0.9. Not great. So, I mean, Tatum's got a massive lead. And a part of that and something I think is difficult to capture with Tatum's value is the fact that he's such an Iron Man. So would you rather have an A player who plays 82 games, 35, 36 minutes a night, or an A-plus player who plays 55 games and you're not sure he's going to make the playoffs, right? That's what defensive win shares is trying to capture is that value in availability. And you know what the old saying is, availability is the best ability, right? So Tatum, clearly in the league, he's got he's top score in two of the three defensive metrics we've ran through. Ingram is last in all. If, if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see Ingram is last in literally every single metric. Um, so stocks, that's steals plus blocks. 
I'm going to start moving a little quicker here. Paul George is clear first, 2.4. Uh, Tatum and Durant are tied at 1.7. And our guy, Brandon Ingram, is bringing up the rear again at 1.1. Blocks and steals, pretty self-explanatory. All these guys, well, the those three guys have a pretty big impact. You're getting a block and a steal just about a game. I mean, that's the real deal. And, and George being at two and a half, that's, that's pretty crazy for a wing. Especially George is usually playing the three um, when he's out there with with Mook Morris. I mean, that's that's legit impact. So next, we're going to move on to defensive rebounding percentage. So this is the percentage of available rebounds that you get when a shot goes up when you're on defense. And I think rebounding is overrated in a lot of defensive impact metrics but underrated when we use our eye test to evaluate defenders, right? Andre Drummond's never really been a great defender, but there's a lot of value in ending a defensive possession. I think as Celtics fans, more than anybody, we can appreciate that. I mean, how many times at the beginning of the season did we watch a defensive rebound fall away in crunch time only for that to be a critical play that probably has, it probably has cost us several games this year. So Tatum has been ridiculous ridiculous on the defensive glass this year his defensive rebound percentage 18.5 percent and he's played a lot of three this year more than last year um or really not so much more than last year more than 1920 when we were really good 18.5 percent that's really good durant seven footer plays a more four than anybody 16.8 percent paul george also pretty pretty Great number at 17.5%. And then our guy, Brandon Ingram, bringing up the rear, 14.6. So again, Tatum, pretty pretty comfy lead in first place in defensive rebounding percentage. So he's been the highest rated in, in three of our five metrics so far. I think that tracks the eye test. I know... Durant has slipped a little bit on defense. He's not played a ton of games. Paul George probably suffering from not playing a ton of games this year. And Brandon Ingram just apparently is not a very good defensive player. Um, all right, defensive Raptor is what we're going we're gonna to tackle next. So defensive Raptor, this is a true all-in-one metric, 538's metric that tries to capture how good you are at defense. So Paul George leading the pack. Tatum just below him at 2.1. Then there's a massive gulf between Tatum and Durant. Durant's at negative 0.1. And then there's another massive gulf with Ingram at negative 2.2. So the gap between Tatum and Durant's around two. And then the gap between Durant and Ingram's at two as well. Uh, Again, Ingram way trailing these guys on the defensive metrics. Paul George, pretty ridiculous, 2.9. Tatum, also pretty ridiculous, 2.1. I mean, for the load on offense that these guys carry, these I mean, for Paul George and Tatum to grade out like they do in some of these cumulative defensive metrics, it's pretty incredible. I mean, that's a lot. And Durant, you know, he's getting older. I understand, you know, he's kind of wean, weaning down. Feels like he doesn't have to play defense as hard, maybe. When he needs to crank it up in the playoffs, he's always great. Uh, but right now, if we're just grading out who's had the best defensive season so far, I think pretty clearly this is a two-horse race between Tatum and Paul George. So interesting stat here, opponent field goal percentage. So how much worse your opponents shoot from the field when you are guarding them? Okay, so... This is actually the first defensive stat where Durant is the leader. Opponents shoot 3.8% worse from the field when they're guarded by Kevin Durant. Makes sense, right? He's a seven-foot lanky monster. I would not be able to get a shot off against any of these guys, but especially not Kevin Durant. He would block it with his chin, probably. So pretty legit. And then again, Tatum, really close second. Minus 3.4 guys shoot 3.4 worse from the field when guarded by Jason Tatum. I mean, that's bordering on elite. That's pretty damn good. And I mean, he's 
way smaller than Kevin Durant and his actually defense at the rim is around, I think it's about two and a half worse at the rim, which is really, really impressive for a six foot eight wing, especially kind of a, you know, Tatum's not a thick boy. He's not Grant Williams. He's not bodying you down there, but he gets a good contest. Does not foul a lot for how many minutes he plays. So he's right there behind Durant, Paul George, minus 2.6, still very good for a wing three, four. And then again, Brandon Ingram, people shoot their dead bang average against Brandon Ingram. He does not affect the shot one way or another. So, and considering he's 6'10", 6'11", that's probably not a good thing. But nonetheless, um, our takeaways overall on defense, I would probably just from a value standpoint, give this one to Tatum, slight edge to Tatum over Paul George. If we're evaluating who's the better defender, I don't think you can really parse out between Tatum and Paul George who the better defender is. These numbers really say Tatum is probably more of a positional help guy, and I think the eye test bears that out. And Paul George is just a menace, man. He is a menace on ball. And Durant, too, kind of plays a different role on defense. He's a shot contester, plays a little closer to a big man, a solid to good defender in his own right. Uh, but I think a pretty clear third here. And then Brandon Ingram. Sorry, dog. <laughs> Clearly way. I mean, I think Ingram probably grades out as a pretty negative defender, frankly, which is a big knock on him, really. Okay, so that's the defense. That's where we end up with the defense. And I can already tell this is going to be a very, very long podcast. I might get two episodes out of this. I'm, I'm slinging from the fly right now, but all right. So next I want to talk about playmaking. Like I said, these guys, huge roles in their offense, and they don't just score. And I think we'll see the tide's going to turn for Brandon Ingram here. He's going to get helped along by the playmaking. He's going to get helped along by the playmaking. All right. So I'm bringing up this, uh, this playmaking chart. And again, I'll walk through this very slowly. So the first stat I want to look at is passes per touch. So this isn't really a metric on how good of a passer you are. It's more about how willing of a passer you are and somewhat more on what type of role you play in the offense. And it's actually pretty crazy. All these dudes are like within 0.1, 0.03 of each other. I'm sorry, I just... And bad at math. They're all within 0.03 passes per touch. Tatum and Ingram pass the most often per touch, 0.62 passes per touch. That is a mouthful. I'm having trouble. I'll have you know there were several cuts in there that I hope you did not notice, but I hope Ben is laughing as he edits this because that was a struggle for me. Paul George right behind him, 0.6 passes per touch. And then Durant right there too, 0.59. I think that's interesting to see how close they are. I think it really highlights how close their roles are on, on offense. And again, Durant passes the least often, as we'll see. That's probably because he's the best scorer in maybe ever. I mean, he's definitely up there. So uh, let's move on to just raw assist numbers. And Tatum is lagging pretty far behind in raw assist numbers. I think part of that's his teammates, but as we'll see, he's frankly just the worst playmaker out of these guys. Like flat out, I'll tell you the conclusion here, but Tatum's at 4.1 assists a game. Durant actually in first, 5.8 assists per game. Paul George right behind him, 5.5. And then Brandon Ingram, 5.3, very solid. 5.3 assists per game for Brandon Ingram. And... You know, Tatum's a full 1.2 assists behind even Ingram, who's in third. He's a distant fourth. Let's move on to assist percentage, and this is the percentage of your possessions that end in an assist. And again, we're going to see Tatum pretty far behind these guys. 19.6 assist percentage for Tatum. 26.6 for Durant. 27.6 for Paul George and Brandon Ingram, 25.8. So you can see a little higher percentage of Paul George's possessions and in assists, despite Durant having more assists. That's because Durant actually just has uh, considerably more touches. I think he's up almost 10 to 15 more touches than any of these guys. So 
that's why he's got more assists per game, but a little bit lower assist percentage. So potential assists. If you caught le- last episode, I talked about potential assists briefly. This is just a pass that leads directly to a shot, right? So Tatum, again, pretty far behind. 8.3 potential assists. And I'll say for a primary score, 8.3 is a fine number, but Durant, George, and Ingram are all plus playmakers for their position. They really are. And Tatum's maybe slightly better than average, uh, but he he lags behind these guys. So he's at 8.3 potential assists. We got Durant at 9.9, Paul George, 10.3, and Ingram, 10.6. So Ingram actually leads that. He also plays on a much worse team than these other three guys. So it's not super surprising. He's getting more potential assists and they're leading to fewer actual assists because he's just passing to bums, frankly, right? That's sorry, man. Jackson Hayes ain't finishing that shot, right? Robert Williams is going to dunk it. Jackson Hayes is not. Uh, So I'm going to move through these last three very quickly. Assist points created. Again, all these three guys are right around 14, 14 and a half. Tatum's down at 10.7. Secondary assists, horribly tracked by NBA.com. This is the hockey assist, quote unquote, the pass to the pass. So the pass to the assist. Tatum's at 0.8. I mean, I feel like he gets more than that a game. Ingram leads this at 1.2. But George Durant, Tatum, 0.8, 0.7. It's a bad stat. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just think they track it wonky. I don't think it's a super useful stat, frankly. And then assist to pass percentage. What percentage of your passes lead to assists? Again, Tatum, pretty far behind. Durant's leading with 14. Then Ingram at 13.6. Paul George, pretty pretty solid drop off for Paul George, eleven point seven. Uh, he he passes a lot for how many touches he has. Not a ton of them are leading to assists. And then Tatum, pretty big jump down there, just at nine. He's at nine flat assist to pass percentage. So I think part of that, you know, I watch more Tatum. I, I don't have as good of a handle on the other three guys' role. Tatum's involved in that kind of pitch back and handoff churn at the top of the Celtics' offense. That was a staple of Stevens. And, you know, he does a lot of like tossing it back and forth with Rob. So I think his assist assist to pass percentage gets hurt a little bit by that. But look, push come to shove. You look at all these numbers together. It is unequivocal that paid that paid him. Tatum is a clear step below these other three guys as a playmaker. I mean, that's just the facts. There's no way to avoid that. I mean, all three of these guys, I think they're all pretty equal. I think if Ingram were on a better team, his stats would bump a little bit. You might even be able to argue he's the best playmaker of the four, frankly. And I think I would make that argument considering the guys he's passing to. I mean, the the stats that kind of control for teammate shooting, like potential assists, uh, they really like Ingram. So he, he's, he's probably, we're number one on Ingram as a playmaker. George, I would actually probably take over Durant, but that's just because Durant doesn't need to pass as much because... As we're about to find out, all he does is score. So the first thing I'm going to run through with scoring. So let's move to scoring. By far the most important thing, when you're a high usage, big wing, getting 25 a game, you obviously need to score efficiently. So first thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to go into the play type data. And what this is, what the numbers that you're seeing, of course, is numbers of possessions for each play type first. So it's pretty crazy how close some of these numbers are for these guys and how how clear it is that their roles are, are pretty similar. And then what percentile they're at in the league for efficiency in these play types. Okay. So how good are they compared to the rest of the league? So I didn't think pure points per possession would be super helpful because like what's 0.9 in ISO points per game and what's 0.83 seems like a pretty minuscule difference. It's actually not. It's a huge difference, at least compared to the rest of the league. So, all right, first stat I want to look at, uh, our, our hated, hated play type is Celtics fans, isolations. So, 
Tatum, 59th percentile as an isolation scorer. It's pretty good. Pretty good for a guy who does 5.1 of them a game. Not as pretty good as Kevin Durant, who's in the 86th percentile as an ISO scorer for a guy who takes five a game. That's absurd. That is absolutely absurd. Paul George and Brandon Ingram, huge gulf. Way worse than Durant and Tatum. Paul George, 35th percentile. Brandon Ingram, 31st percentile. It's interesting that you never hear about how often Paul George isos and how he's destroying his team because of the isos, despite being way worse at them than Jason Tatum, like way worse at them than Jason Tatum. Same with Ingram, although he's a little lower in volume. He's about two less a game. Pretty significant, but he's also way worse than Tatum and Durant are at ISOing, so probably a good thing he's not. Uh, But yes, Tatum was dreadful at isolations for the first month. He's now well over average at them, which tells me he's been even better than that recently um so plenty fine iso score that's a plenty useful play in the playbook uh but he's still there's a gulf between george ingram and then tatum and then another massive gulf between tatum and durant so durant's just on another level as an iso score you're probably not surprised that i was not either so pick and roll ball handler the points per possession when you take a shot, when you score off a pick and roll, essentially, right? I think that's what this is looking at. So you're going to see Tatum, 73rd percentile, not quite elite, but pretty damn good as a six foot eight, six foot nine wing. Pretty damn good, 73rd percentile. Not as pretty damn good as Kevin Durant, who's in the 87th percentile as a pick and roll ball handler. He's seven feet tall. This does not make sense. It's absurd. Although you'll note, his volume is considerably lower than these other guys. Considerably lower. He's over, he's around two less a game than Tatum and about one and a half less than Ingram. Or actually around two less than Ingram as well. So... Yeah, he he just doesn't do it as often, but man, when he does, he does not miss. Paul George, bringing up the rear by quite a bit. He's in the 39th percentile, and he has by far the most number of these possessions. He's almost at 10 pick-and-roll handler possessions a game, and he's by far the worst, 39th percentile. Brandon Ingram, almost the exact same volume as Tatum, 5.6. Tatum was at 5.7. Ingram in the 58th percentile, and again, Tatum, 73rd percentile. So even though Ingram's fine, Tatum's a big step above that, and then Durant's just friggin' ridiculous, man. <laughs> like He's so good. <laughs> um, all right, so spot-up possessions. All these guys take pretty similar number. George is a little lower, but makes sense, right? He's doing more pick-and-roll ball handling, so he's not going to spot up as much. Uh, Tatum, 68th percentile, pretty good. Durant, 81st. I mean, Kevin Durant's nuts, man. He's in like the 80th percentile for every play type. It makes no sense. I mean, it makes sense. He's one of the best scorers ever. Paul George, 94th percentile. And that's on a down shoot. Like, we'll see. Paul George's jump shot is off this year. He's still 94th percentile as a spot up guy. You'll notice. He's got the lowest volume. He's got the lowest volume, so by 0.7 less than Ingram and you know almost 2 less than, than Tatum, uh, 0.8 less than Durant. So the lowest volume by a, a possession or two a game. So pretty significant, pretty significant over the course of a season. Um, but yeah, 94th percentile for Paul George. And then Ingram, he's worst, 50th percentile, bang average as a spot-up guy, and... Um, you know, all these guys are good spot up guys. They can all shoot. They're huge. They can get to the rim. They can play make out of spot ups, uh, driving kicks. I mean, they're just all very, to, very good to great players. And Ingram trailing pretty far behind even Tatum, and he's still an average spot up guy. So, and he's on a down shooting year too, as we'll see. Post ups, pretty, pretty interesting here. This is like what I call the savvy vet move right here the wing who can post up this is vet stuff 
And you'll see Tatum, dreadful, 29th percentile. Ingram, dreadful, 33rd percentile. Paul George, really, really good, 78th percentile. Wow, that sounds amazing. What could Kevin Durant possibly be? He's in the 90th percentile as a post-up guy. (laughs) And he takes more than one. He has one more post-up a game than any of these guys. So not only is post-up the most, he's by far, he's one of the most efficient post-up players in the league. Let me me read these Durant stats off again. 86th percentile in ISO, 87th as a pick-and-roll ball handler, 81st as a spot-up guy, and 90th as a post-up guy. He's like the most efficient player at everything. I mean, it's absurd. Anyway, so that's why he doesn't pass as much as everybody else. I guess that makes sense, right? So where was I in post-ups? Oh, anyway, just wrapping up. Durant, well above even Paul George. And Paul George, I mean, it's just posts up should not really be a part of Ingram and Tatum's game. I mean, Tatum and Ingram can play make out of them all right, but they're just not scoring down there. And I think a part of that is just being a vet, understanding how that stuff works, understanding space, understanding how things work. I said that twice, but hey, man, we're moving along. We're already 30 minutes in. I'm not even halfway done. So we're just going. We're rolling with it. All right. Last one is cuts. And this is interesting because none of these guys even have one full cut possession a game. Tatum is by far the most efficient on cuts. He's in the 91st percentile as a cutter. Cut more, Jason. Cut more. Cut more. Cut more. Cut more. Please cut more. 91st percentile. Huge gap between Ingram and Durant and Tatum. Ingram and Durant right next to each other, 68th and 69th percentile. And then Paul George, the 7th percentile as a cutter. I mean tiny 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 sample size but even then that's crazy right (laughs) i think he's only had like 12 or 15 cuts this year that ended cuts that ended in the possession so but still man you think he'd score more than you know he must have scored on like three of them that's absolutely insane so Paul George, probably small sample size we're looking at here, but push come to shove, he was dreadful at finishing cuts this year. So, all right, takeaways on the play types. Other than post-ups, Tatum's either average or well above average in all these play types. I think Durant's clearly the best. Um, Tatum's the best, second best ISO guy, second best pick and roll ball handler third best spot up guy he really doesn't have a weakness and i think for that reason i would probably take him second in kind of evaluating what we're looking at with these stats here his volume's good on everything he's efficient or at least relatively efficient at all these play types on a down shooting year even so i think I'd rather have the guy who I know can get me an ISO bucket. I know can be a solid pick and roll ball handler and who can spot up all at a B plus as opposed to like Paul George. I mean, he's been really bad as a pick and roll ball handler, but amazing on spot ups and pretty bad as an ISO scorer too. And I mean, I think Ingram just trails pretty far behind all these guys on these play types. He's just a less efficient player. Uh, So yeah, I think, Tatum is coming in at a pretty clear second when we're evaluating kind of the play type data. All right. So next key to being a big wing who handles the ball a lot is rim pressure. You need to get into the paint either via a drive or off a pass. And you need to be able to finish because what is the point if you can't finish, right? What do you DJ Augustine? Okay. So moving on. This is a big chart. This is a huge chart. I didn't even know I did this. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. So number of drives a game. Important to know, all these guys are pretty close. Durant actually last at 10. Paul George right at 14. Tatum and Ingram right at 12. All their numbers on points per game when they drive, about the same. Tatum actually leads at 7.7. The other guys are all between 7.2 and 7.0. I mean, we're, we're not... 
there's no lines of demarcation here. All right, this is like I alluded to running very, very long. So at the risk of losing you as I just randomly and crazily rattle off numbers, I'm gonna call it a day there before we get to rim pressure. So I'm gonna make this a two-parter. Next Friday, we will release part two. And what we're gonna get at in that second part is we're gonna hit the last two pieces of scoring, which will be rim pressure, which is a very massive chart. Uh, and then straight up just jump shooting numbers. And then I'll talk about kind of the overall impact metrics. But I want to do these things justice. I don't want to run through them. And I also don't want this episode to be like two hours long. And that kind of feels like where we're headed. So at the halfway mark here, why don't we evaluate what we've learned about these guys? First, I think defense, Tatum's probably first, then Paul George, then Durant. And then, like, way fourth is Brandon Ingram. Playmaking, though, I think you'd give it to Ingram. And then virtual tie between Paul George and Kevin Durant. And then Tatum is uh, bringing up the rear in playmaking. And then just as kind of a scorer in their various play types, I think you're going to have to go Ingram last, Paul George third, Tatum a pretty clear second, in my opinion, and then Durant just way in first. So I think if we're evaluating right now, just based on the information we have right now, I think you'd have to put Durant first. I'd probably put Tatum second, and then Paul George, and then Brandon Ingram. He's the least efficient in the play types and by far the worst defender. I just don't think slightly better playmaking really bumps him over Paul George or or Tatum so I would put Ingram last I think Ingram pretty clearly last so until next week I hope you stuck it out with me I really appreciate it like I said we will get to the last of these metrics here and my three more lovely charts that hopefully Ben makes look pretty because these are (laughs) ugly as I look at them here Um, but all right thanks for listening i appreciate all the support please like subscribe all that bs uh and you know r.i.p to my grill spoonie out